listening to Polemics Report for January 23, 2018. This is your host, J.D. Hall. This is the program we hope will be glorifying to God, convicting to sinners, and edifying to the saints. A program with sincere questions and biblical answers. If you have a sincere question, email me, jd at polemicsreport.com. We are listener supported. You can support us on Patreon for five ninety five a month, thirty four ninety five five a month, or forty nine ninety five a month, and get free books or t shirts and stuff for helping us out. You can also support my book, Ungodly Mess: How Marxism Has Stolen Christianity in America, on GoFundMe. One of the admins will post those links there, or just click donate on the screen there on Facebook Live or from the website pulpitandpen.org. Pulpit and Pen is the Rolex of Polemix blogs, the most trusted name in polemics and discernment thank you again for listening in and by the way if you're listening you're listening on the bible thumping wingnut network i hope you like the new format we've created it allows me to podcast a little bit more quickly and get more things done in my busy 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 schedule it takes 30 minutes this way and i get to do it a little bit more often Thank you again for your support. Uh, starting out with uh, news story number four today, we're going to do not five, but four. The Gospel Coalition uses homo priests to push for adoption by non-traditional families. You see that again at the Rolex of Plemix blogs. Sam Albury is a priest of an apostate denomination. That is the Anglican Church. He is, the, he is same-sex attracted, and Albury has also become the gay darling of the evangelical intelligentsia he's everywhere super popular super popular he's at the cool kids table you know how in high school it's popular or maybe that was 10 years ago i don't know let's see the first thing was it was for girls to walk around with chihuahuas in their purse like a teacup uh, type type of dog and then it was to have a gay bestie you know how at least at one time i think it still is you have a gay bff maybe it's so common now they're like a dime a dozen Maybe pretty girls are just flocked with gay guys. Sam Albury is the gay BFF of evangelicals. Evangelicals are notoriously behind the times. Anyway, he's always there at the ERLC, the Gospel Coalition, wherever Tim Keller is, wherever the cool kids are hanging out. Albury provides a safe middle ground for evangelicals who don't necessarily want to you know, oppose homosexuality, but they're not exactly ready to embrace it just yet because they do get some money from Orthodox Christians. Most recently, the Gospel Coalition promoted a video by this homosexual priest of the Anglican Church who, by the way, was advocating that we Christians encourage the government to allow adoption by singles and those without nuclear families, meaning those without mom and Dad. Now keep in mind that Albury recently advocated for the destruction of the nuclear family, or at least its redefinition at the ERLC in a conference ironically called the Cross-Shaped Family Conference. The point of that conference was basically to say, uh, do we have to define family as like a mom and a dad? Why can't it be a bunch of homos getting together and loving on each other, huh? Isn't the church a family? Well, ecclesiologically, the church is a family, but this is about the family unit for the purpose of parentage and raising children. They redefined the term so as, get this, the ERLC redefined the term family as it's understood outside of ecclesiological bounds in order to allow a place for the homosexual to fit in, to feel like they're perfectly loved and accepted. And Salm Albury is one of those. So then, this same guy now encourages things like, uh, let me see here, what does it say? Uh, oh, oh, gross. Do I want to read that? It, yeah, he wants, to, uh, he wants to watch your kids. If you're straight, he wants you to allow your gay... Christian, quote unquote, friend, to watch your kids because he might be lonely. Mm. No. No. Uh, full bag of nopes. Nope, nope. Nope. Mm -mm. He's also argued that homosexuals should have physical, but non sexual, but physical. You know, like cuddling. Intimate, quote, intimate relationships with those of the same sex. So long as they don't do the intercourse, then it's perfectly okay. And now he wants the church to help it make easier for the uh, gay celibate. As long as you're celibate and you claim to be celibate, gay celibate Christians to adopt kids. Now, just a reminder, the Gospel Coalition's board includes Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary President Danny Aiken, Tabidi Anabwile, Tim Keller, 
Russell Moore, Ray Ortland. It also includes G3 speakers like David Platt and John Piper. By the way, I saw a screenshot of Fred Butler saying, I just got back from G3 and it was a great time. I had lots of fellowship and it was a good time. Everybody got along and it was just so nice and it was an encouragement. Listen, listen, when you're trying to defend the indefensible, which is speaking with those whose theology is a little bit more than wonky, Dr. MacArthur said it was the greatest polemical battle of our time, you sound like you're defending a Hillsong conference, Fred. You sound like you're defending uh, a Bethel conference. Well, in spite of the theology of the people that spoke, it was a great time, and we felt the spirit move, and it was, let's hug everybody. It makes me sick. Also, oh, by the way, do you know who else is this? Now, keep in mind, this is a, as the post would say here, this is a video from the Gospel Coalition promoting this. From the Gospel Coalition. By the way, love Fred Butler, nice guy. He's being obtuse, though. This is, yeah, Together for the Gospel. You know who else is on the board of Together for the Gospel? Uh, H.B. Charles, Mark Dever, Albert Moeller, and Legan Duncan, who are the bulk of the lineup at Shepherd's Conference. Do you think John MacArthur Arthur wants uh, homos to uh, to adopt kids? Do you think he thinks that's a good idea? This is why there's got to be separation, people. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, in Central America, the Pope of Rome encourages poor the poor to go to America and calls immigration laws crazy it's just crazy let's be clear the pope has always been a globalist when i say pope i mean like any pope all popes because the catholic and roman catholic means you know universal the vatican is a nation state it has its own embassy it levies its own taxes it has its own laws it has its own border it has its own police force it has its own diplomats it is its own independent nation state and what it wants is to have control of the world and they found the perfect tool to be able to do that in the one who is now known as Pope Francis. He is a Jesuit, the first Jesuit Pope, and a Marxist. There is a problem, though, for the Roman Catholic conquest of the world, and the problem is what stands between the Roman Catholic Church and the rest of the world happens to be Protestantism and the bulwark of Protestantism, the greatest proponent of Protestantism. I don't mean as a nation, but I mean collectively you put a lot of us together, we have a lot of power, that's the United States of America. The nation state also is what stands between Roman Catholicism and globalism because the nation state federalizes power not internationally, but in a single nation. How do you define nation? It is uh, an entity, a body politic that has a common language, a common culture, and common borders, sovereign borders. That's what makes a nation state. What they want is for the United States and for every nation state to not have a singular culture, not have a singular language, and not have national sovereign borders. So Pope Francis, like all globalists, seeks to dismantle that. He wants an end to that, and so he took the opportunity while in Panama to discuss this very issue, encouraging the poor in that nation to head to the United States. In, in spite of what Archbishop Jose Domingo uh, Ulion of Panama said, quote, young people often fall into the hands of drug traffickers and so many other realities that our young people face. Instead of talking about how the Roman Catholic Church can help the poor in Panama, which, by the way, is a part of Central America that has been ravaged by pedophile priests. No, instead of helping those in need, the Roman Catholic Church simply says, go to America. They got welfare. By the way, border walls, the Pope says, are not Christian, quote unquote. Vatican has a wall. I just want to point that out for the umpteen thousandth time. Uh, it's unchristian. So go to the United States and get taken care of by their welfare program. So thanks, uh, Pope. Number two in today's news cycle, Charisma News says Spurgeon would attend conference with the NAR Apostles. Hillsong, Bethel, and IHOP. 
Now, you might recall that I did a post on why Spurgeon would not attend the G3 conference because speaking there are the Russian Bushists, that is, the social gospel promoters. Oh, yeah, no, you don't like the term social gospel? Tough, that's what it is. Before that, it was called social religion. Now we call it social justice because we, we really haven't re, you know, uh, like changed its definition. We just changed the word itself. Like it still means what it means, and that is that Jesus Christ came to enact social change as the first and foremost priority of the gospel. Uh, I did that post why Spurgeon would not attend G3. Now, nobody who spoke at G3 that I'm aware of addressed the article, and the reason is they could not. Uh, whether it would be Phil or Vody or whoever else, James White, doesn't matter. Not that I think he has an affinity for Spurgeon. I, I don't think he's a big Spurgeon guy. Uh, Either way, uh, no one speaking at G3 addressed the article because they couldn't. The only way that you could possibly say Spurgeon would speak with someone like John Piper is to betray your ignorance of Charles Spurgeon. These men aren't going to say that. They know that Charles Spurgeon wouldn't speak at G3, but frankly, he was a better man than they are. The only notable flash in the pan pseudo celebrity with a Twitter pulpit that we're aware interacted with the article was Samuel Say, who didn't really interact with the article. He just called us devilish for having posted it. We just asked the question Do you think that anyone will, or, or do you think that Charles Spurgeon would attend this conference given that what is being taught by some of them is in grave error? Grave enough that an entire statement was written about it. I don't mean to belabor the point. I know I've been talking about it a lot lately. So anyways, imagine my surprise when I wake up this morning and see Charisma Mag is running an article asking the question, would the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, attend the SEND conference? No, not SEND conference from the North American Mission Board, that flashy piece of trash conference that they have every year. No, I'm talking about the SEND conference. Who's speaking at the SEND conference? Uh, Bill Johnson, Francis Chan, Lou Engel. By the way, all those things have, all those people have one thing in common. They're NAR. Todd White, same thing. Mike Bickle of the Kansas City Prophets. Heidi Baker. Ben Fitzgerald. That's the guy with the tarot card mama. Uh, and the NAR apostle, of course, Sammy Rodriguez, who also speaks at ERLC stuff. That guy is everywhere. He's basically the evangelical Illuminati. Anyways, um, do you think Charles Spurgeon would attend a conference with Heidi Baker, Mike Bickle, Francis Chan, uh, Bill Johnson? Do you think he would? And the answer is no, not in a million years. Well, here's the thing. I would argue that he would not attend the SEND conference for the same reason. Uh, by the way, the charismatic said he would. They gave four reasons. It was basically like Spurgeon's for evangelism. Spurgeon loves the fellowship. <laughs> totally indifferent to Spurgeon's separatism. Absolutely oblivious to where Sp Spurgeon stood doctrinally. It, basically, the Charisma Mag article sounds exactly like Fred Butler. <laughs> uh, there would be lots of good fellowship, and we're all going to really encourage each other. All right, yeah, Spurgeon still wouldn't show up at your stupid event. And if someone says, now hold on a second, there's clearly a difference between the social justice of Platt, Dever, and Piper and the charismaticism of Todd White, Mike Bickle, and Bill Johnson. There's clearly a difference, J.D., and I'd say you're right. John MacArthur said social justice is the greatest polemical battle of our age, not charismaticism. So it's actually worse. Yeah, that's right. I said it. And then let's go to number one, shall we? Uh, number one, Baptist chaplain uh, named Gay Role Model of the Year. This uh, over at Reformation Charlotte. Uh, who else would you expect to be a, a great role model? Than a, oh, hold on a second. Is it not great role model? It's gay. It's gay ro it actually says gay role model of the year. That is confusing. The influx of sexually deviant behavior into all walks of life is nothing new. It accords, as Jeff says uh, in Romans 1, as a part of God's wrath that he's bestowed to, 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 uh, to rebellious man. However, all that being the case, um, it still doesn't explain stuff like this. Ray Vincent is an associate chaplain at the University of South Wales, and he was given a prestigious award because, not in spite of, but because he championed the act of sodomy. He's an 83-year-old Welsh Baptist um, minister. 
He told iNews that he was, quote, humbled by the award and it's something to live up to. It challenges, he says, it challenges me to, quote, be more of an advocate for the acceptance of different sexualities, also known as sins. He says there's a tendency today to think that everything's okay because we have same-sex marriage and young people are open in their attitudes today, but it's still an issue and a lot of churches still haven't got their act together. And by getting their act together, he means approving of it. We're handing out awards, by the way. I want to point this out, which I can do with this fancy technology I've got here. Look at this. Do you see that right here? Uh, Hillsong, it's a, this is from the website. Uh, I'm, I'm backing it up. This is from the website uh, for the call, or excuse me, the send, the send conference. And let me maybe pull this up so you can see... Uh, Maybe I can't. Do you see how this looks like baseball cards? They've got one for Hillsong. They've got one for Lou Engle. They've got one for Todd White. And it goes on and on and on. They've got one for Francis Chan. And it has what looks to be their signatures on the side. They're so, sorry, I have a computer screen here, here, and here. and I'm. There's one on the side, their signature, or what looks to be a signature. These are clearly made to be baseball cards. The scripture says, in the last days, people will accumulate for themselves false teachers so as to scratch their itching ears. Uh, some versions say collecting. And when you look at the list of those speakers at the Sin Conference, as they put them on base, I got a Todd White, I'll trade you a Mike Bickle for a Heidi Baker. Well, Heidi Baker rides around in fiery chariots. Do you have any Jennifer LeClairs? Because I'd like to see your fiery chariot and raise you a sneaky squid spirit. Well, sneaky squid spirits are nice, but have you checked into uh, uh, Jason or whatever, uh, whatever Mr. Le Pastor, uh, Apostle Lestrange? He was talking about the Leviathan spirit the other day. Leviathan spirits, like you're trading Pokemon cards, baseball cards, accumulating for themselves, collecting for themselves false teachers. Now we look at the crazy charismatic guys and say that's so messed up. I would ask you the question, if someone is taking the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're making it about something other than the redemption of souls, even if they come off as reasonable as David Platt, Mark Dever, Legan Duncan, Albert Muller, H.B. Charles, let me ask you, is that any less sinister? Changing the gospel is changing the gospel. Thanks for listening to Polemics Report. I hope you like the new format. We're trying. Support us on Patreon if you can. I hope you appreciate the fight that we're putting up. We're doing our best and we're not backing down. God bless you, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Until then, as always, Semper Reformanda. <laughs>